We're still in partial lockdown here, so I can't get out and do as much landscape photography as I want. I'm restricted on times and places. So I'm still carrying on having a go with some of those indoor creative photography ideas. But in this one, I want to go back to an earlier challenge that I did where I didn't actually manage to get the image that I planned for, although I got an image that I really like. I'm gonna have another go at bubble photography with a completely new setup and approach. And I'm also gonna tell you exactly why I'm an idiot. You might have seen if you've been watching my videos that I've managed to get out and do a couple of landscape, seascape kind of shoots, but I'm still very, very limited in terms of where I can go and what times I can go. So I'm still actually playing around with some of those indoor creative photography ideas. Now, way back in the middle of April, I put out a video, which was my first attempt at doing some soap bubble photography, and I struggled. In fact, I gave up on my original uh, idea of what I wanted to get, because what I was looking for was one of these kind of big uh, kind of parts of the bubble that looks almost like an alien planet coming up or something along those lines. Um, and I gave up on that idea and I went in super close, super macro, and uh, I got an image that I really like, which is this one, but I didn't get what I wanted. So I've decided to have a go at doing it again. Now I had lots of suggestions on the video of ways that I could make it better. I've done some more research and uh, I've also looked at the kit that I'm using and this is where I have to declare that I am an idiot. And here's why. Over the last 10 weeks, I've done quite a lot of macro or very close up photography and I've really, really struggled. Now I've been using my Nikon D810 and I've been using macro extension tubes, uh, 12, 20 and 36. And I've been using that mostly with this 50 mil lens. I did have a go with a 70 to 200, but the whole combination is just so big and unwieldy. It's really difficult when you're trying to do, you know, fine adjustment stuff like you would do with macro. Now, here's the problem. Macro photography, of course, has a very shallow depth of field. Not a problem, I expected that. But where I have struggled is the effect that these extension tubes have on the minimum and maximum focusing distance of the lens. With all three tubes on, the closest focusing point I can get with this lens is 21 centimeters from the image plane of the camera. But if I then go from the closest focusing point to the farthest focusing point, all the way out to infinity, that's only 21.1 centimeters. It's a millimeter difference between close focus and infinity focus. And of course, depth of field is a fraction of that. So that millimeter is the only room I've got to play around with in terms of composition. And with the 12 mm tube on, the closest distance it let me focus at was 22.8 centimeters from the image plane of the camera. The furthest point, if I went to infinity, I could focus at was 25.3 centimeters from the image plane. So I've got about two and a half centimeters of room to maneuver for composition purposes. Now I'd been toying with the idea of buying a proper macro lens. And then I thought to myself, well, I don't think it's worth spending the money because when I had my old APS-C D7100, I had a 40 millimeter macro lens for that and I never used it. And then I realized what an idiot I've been because I've still got it. 40 millimeter macro lens or micro lens as Nikon call them on the D7100. Now with that setup, I can focus at the closest point at 16.3 centimeters from the image plane. But where it really makes a difference is I can dial that out still all the way to infinity. And it lets me focus pretty much as far away as I want to. 
So it gives me a lot more scope to just move the camera back a little bit and change the focus and still be able to get an image. And then if I need to crop it down, I can. It's not an ideal macro lens solution at all, but it's certainly better than what I have been using. And so for the foreseeable future, if I want to do macro close-up photography, this is what I'm going to be using. And I wish I'd thought of it earlier. <laughs> anyway, enough beating myself up. Let's get on and talk about the rest of the setup that I'm going to be using for this uh, soap bubble photography. Okay, so here is my new setup for this. The D7100 with the 40mm macro lens on, which is going to make composing much, much easier. I am using a, uh, a completely different mix this time. I've been playing around with this. Um, I would have liked to have got my hands on some glycerin because a lot of people I've uh, heard say that putting glycerin in the mix makes the bubbles last longer but we don't have any and it doesn't seem to be that easy to get hold of here so I played around with some different mixes and I've ended up instead of using um, washing up liquid or dish soap I've actually used a liquid hand soap and that seems to just have a little bit more resilience in the bubbles and the mix I've got is about two and a half to one so that's two and a half measures of water to one measure of dish soap giving it a good mix and instead of using a big bowl like I was last time I've got a much much smaller um, receptacle it's actually the uh, the back end cap for a lens and I want to try to keep the bubbles fairly small and I'll come on to the reason for that in a second um, you may be wondering why I've got a couple of milk cartons here I'll come on to that in a second as well uh, I've got a black background, a black base and a black background set up I've got my flash uh, on the remote trigger which is going to point down uh, and that's actually on my old tripod which actually isn't much used for anything else because the leg locks on it are very very unreliable but it does have one of these uh, centre columns that you can angle over so it is a bit useful for this or it's a bit large as a light stand now obviously if I just fire the flash down here I'm going to get hot spots in so what I've got is um, a diffuser now it's only a, I don't know what it is, 50 centimetre diffuser and if I have very large bubbles and, and photograph them from further away, what's going to happen is the diffuser is going to end up, if you like, reflected in the bubble surface. So I'm going to need to keep my bubbles reasonably small so that I get a nice even coverage of light across them. So I'm going to be pretty close in. I was going to kind of pre-focus, but I think what I'm going to do is blow the bubble and then try and focus on it before it pops. So focus, so blow the bubble, adjust the composition as necessary, uh, focus on it, and then uh, put the diffuser over the top carefully, wait for everything to settle down, wait for some nice colours to appear, and then take the shot, which will obviously fire the flash as well. So let's turn everything on. I've got my liquid in there, I'm going to put a little tiny bit more in. And then we blow a bubble. And I've been practicing this technique, as I said. Don't get it right every time, but. Nope, got it wrong that time. You kind of got to get in low, and as soon as the bubble starts to form, you start to lift out. Kind of like that. Yeah, that looks interesting. Recompose and then focus on the bubble. And I am using manual focus. Okay, let me pop the diffuser back in and it's kind of resting on the end of the lens and on the milk cartons and that keeps it out of the frame oh. and 
can recompose a little bit because it's a little bit lopsided. And try again. Probably going to have to apply some contrast in post. The background, a little bit of detail coming out on the background, just because I've got the diffuser angled up a little bit so that it's not appearing in the frame. Quite nice. And then it's just going to be a case of having a play. Oh colours are starting to move in this now and then it's just going to be a case of playing around with a few different uh, kind of bubble sizes and ha just having a look and see what we can get really really gently on the bubble it makes the colours swirl even more so we'll give that a little go shall we see if I can avoid bursting the bubble as I blow on it Hopefully, if I get enough decent ones, three images, which I'll have already shared with you partway through this process. And uh, hopefully, they'll be quite nice. There's a bubble sitting there, it's been sitting there for ages, doesn't want to pop. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's uh, my second attempt at this, and uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with the results I've got. That's quite nice colours there, actually. Do another one. It's pretty cool. Um, so I've learned a lot from my previous attempt and I've learned a few things from this one. Um, this uh, camera lens setup has really made the whole process a lot, a lot easier. And I'm kicking myself for not thinking of doing this earlier because uh, all the way through this period I've been playing around with macro stuff and making life hard for myself. But I'm still shooting because there's still nice colours in this bubble. But I'm gonna go now. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please consider giving it a like, sharing it on social media. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think of this. Maybe share your experiences of having a go at this. And uh, if you're new to the channel, don't forget about hitting subscribe before you go. And if you're a subscriber already, thank you very much. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. So, thank you very much. And until the next video, bye. Oh, stay safe.